If uh, the last couple of years have been difficult on you, I highly recommend therapy. I'm an uninsured American entertainer, so I don't have any of that shit. So uh, <laughs> I recommend something different. You got to find an outlet is my point. You get to that point, you need to find an outlet. For me, it was Fortnite. That's what I did instead of therapy. <laughs> if you don't know what it is, good for you. You shouldn't. You're an adult. It was my outlet. I found it. My nieces introduced me to this game during the pandemic. We played with them for about two weeks. Then we kicked those little bitches off so the grown-ups could play. <laughs> I've never been called so many terrible things by children in my life <laughs> than I have playing this game. I had an eight-year-old kid told me I shot like a Korean lesbian. <laughs> what does that even mean? How are you racist, homophobic, and misogynistic in six words, little kid? That's, are you a guest on Joe Rogan? You gotta find your outlet. Fortnite works for me. That's what keeps me off the internet correct in the way people spell the word there. I thought the world was ending. The pandemic got me. That was a terrifying moment. I was locked in my house all by myself with nothing but my imagination and the internet. And I can convince myself of just about anything if you give me that. I thought the world was in it. I thought COVID was disease from the Bible. I thought it was the horseman of the apocalypse come to kill everybody. I was freaking out. Oh my God, is this about to happen? And two weeks later, COVID was over. I live in the South. I know how fast it was over. That's <laughs> Two weeks in, we're like, nope, our bars are restaurants now. Come on back. Half off Coronas, karaoke night. <laughs> they always want you to be afraid. There's always some disease. This was the current disease. There's wild bird, mad cow, pig AIDS. There's... <laughs> they just put an animal in front of the disease. Be afraid of it. That's how I knew COVID was over. When they pranced out monkeypox. That's when I knew. <laughs> Be afraid of monkeypox. What is it? We don't know, but 15 people have it and 17 of them are gay. <laughs> Disease. There are no horsemen of the apocalypse to worry about. Disease is over. What? Famine, death, war. We're doing all right. When was the last time you saw a famine? People used to die from not eating enough food. That was, that was the problem. Now we beat it. We won. People used to die from not eating enough. Now more people die every year from eating too much. <laughs> we won. Starvation, 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 Pfft, America. <laughs> you understand? Famine showed up and we ate its horse. Do you get it? <laughs> you can't starve to death in America. You tell me you starved to death in America, they should just rule it a suicide. They should just... <laughs> he meant to do that. Check his search history. There is something going on here. You couldn't find food in America? You, you couldn't find a Girl Scout with some cookies? Or a tamale man? Tamales, tamales, tamales. You couldn't find somebody trying to feed you for the Instagram photo? You couldn't. Eat this sandwich, homeless man. Click, click. How do you say so skinny? Click, click. because our food doesn't chase us back anymore. We were in better shape when we had to work harder for it. Now, everything comes freshly delivered to your door, but our ancestors worked a little harder. Remember that? Back in the day, if your, your wife wanted saber-toothed tiger for your anniversary, you better limber up, bitch. Just... <laughs> now we have pre-cut avocados for your weak hands. We beat disease, we beat famine, war. That might be my favorite horseman of the apocalypse. I love a war, boy. War didn't know what it was getting itself into when it got to us. War had it easy for millennia. Just starting fights, Egyptians and Jews, Cain and Abel, 100 years war, crusades, Vikings. War got to us and we leaned in. <laughs> didn't we? War shows up. Here's how war works. We're like, oh, we know, buddy. <laughs> World War I, World War II, Vietnam, Revolutionary War, Civil War, Korea, whatever's going on in the Middle East, ha <laughs> we love a war. And War's like, okay, you guys are taking this way too seriously. 
We were like, ah, Star Wars and Storage Wars and Cupcake Wars. <laughs> Wars like, okay, this is just a costume. I just dress up like this on the weekends, you guys. <laughs> Warp it off more than it could chew. You ever messed around and punched a meth head? You ever done that? <laughs> I realize that's a very Beaumont, Texas metaphor to ask you to get. I don't mean you started it. I just mean they did something and you did one of those, get off me, and they're like. You're like, oh shit, your nerves aren't connected to your brain right now. That's what happened when war got to America. War slapped us and we said, harder, daddy. That <laughs> war, war had rules before us. There were, there were ways that wars were fought until America. Remember the British? Remember how they used to fight? They used to line up in rows, remember that? And just get shot. <laughs> they would just line up. And, and get shot. Blip, 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 blip. And the dude behind you would just take your place. <laughs> and also get shot. <laughs> we weren't going to stand for that. That wasn't how we were going to fight this war. Remember when the British showed up in their dumb little rows? We weren't having that. They're all, Hello! We're not having that. We're back here hiding in the bushes like some lizards. <laughs> what do they think we're about to do? They think we're about to go out there? <laughs> the fuck we are? What do you want to do? We should cheat. <laughs> let's wait till they drink that tea and let's jump out and kill them all. And then they drank that tea. We jumped up, dressed up like Christmas trees, killed everybody. <laughs> America. <laughs> I don't think they wanted to win, y'all. I don't, they, they wore red. <laughs> In the snow. <laughs> and in case we still couldn't find them, they brought a drummer. We planted that flag 245 years ago, and we hadn't stopped fighting since. Sometimes we don't even need a bad guy. We'll fight each other over what the flag means. <laughs> we always act like things can't mean more than one thing, right? The flag means this. OK, fair. But if you're a young football player protesting racial injustice, that flag means something entirely different to you on Sundays than it does to a veteran who fought and was injured and saw that flag before he got wheeled into the hospital overseas, that flag means something different to him than it does to that young football player, to the little Chinese girl who made that flag. <laughs> you think she'd say freedom? Do you think, do you think, do you think? There's, there's two guys went to fight in the Ukraine, uninvited. <laughs> Americans just flew coach <laughs> to the war, flew coach. And I want to believe that that's some deep-seated sense of duty, right? That these men went over there because they felt obligated, they had to, they saw atrocity in the wars they fought in and decided to come do something about it. But the truth is, man, if you're a soldier, you're you're sort of on high alert all the time. I've gone over and performed for these dudes, and I was in Iraq the first time I went in 2008. It was the hottest place I've ever been in my life. It's 126 degrees outside. And yeah, that whoo. <laughs> Your balls make that sound at, a, <laughs> at 120, ooh. 
They just, I didn't even know y'all could talk, little buddy. I didn't even know. <laughs> it's the hottest place I've ever been in my life, 126 degrees. These dudes live, it's, you can't even explain that temperature to someone who's never experienced it. You know how when you make cookies and you lean in to check on them and you get a little too close, like, fuck! <laughs> People live there. <laughs> It's the hottest place I've ever been. I don't even think the terrorists hate us, to be perfectly honest. I think they blow themselves up to cool off. I really do. I really do. <laughs> Better. <laughs> These soldiers live tough lives. We were in Baghdad in a place called Sadr City, and it's hot outside, and there's still activity at the time. First comic is on stage when an IED off in the distance goes off. Boom. And she freezes, and then I peed a little. Because <laughs> a bomb went off. And I look at the soldier next to me, I go, what was that? He just goes, it wasn't close enough to matter. <laughs> and just moved on with his night. And we just send those people home after that? Just go home, be normal, hang out in the suburbs. Are you fucking kidding me? Of course they're in the Ukraine. How long do you make it at a Starbucks when you've been wound up to 10 and pushed out into society watching some girl just scrawling a misspelled name on some soy milkshake? Is that Jeff with a G or is with a Y? What? kid making a TikTok in the corner. You know, he's just like, I could kill everybody in here with a fucking napkin. <laughs> Starbucks will drive you insane. Here's what I've found. I like to make the world a better place. What I like to do sometimes to make the world a better place, I'll go to Starbucks, because, you know, daytime, you smoke a little too much pot. It's daytime, you got shit to do. You're trying... <laughs> So you gotta bring yourself back up to a functional place, so you gotta go get a coffee. It's like a Mormon speedball. <laughs> so here's what I like to do. I'll go to get the coffee. You gotta go through the drive-thru. It's important, you're setting a certain stage here. You tell the person, I like a medium coffee. She'll go, okay. Now when you get to the window, you have to do some things differently. You have to go, hey, what did the guy behind me have? And she's gonna go, well, he had a large coffee. Here's what you gotta do. You gotta let me get both of these. This begins something beautiful, right? There's this pay it forward program is now in action. And you can't leave, you gotta watch. You gotta pull up a little bit, adjust your mirror, put your car in park. This is your magic, savor it. Cause the guy's gonna go to pay behind you and you're gonna see this little pan of mine, this interchange, he's gonna go to pay and you're gonna see a. And that wave is what you're looking for. It lets you know you've begun this beautiful thing and now you were free to leave. And get back in line and get all the shit you wanted the first time but didn't want to pay for. <laughs> right? <laughs> 19 cake pops, put them in a the bag, they're free. I know the law. This is the dumbest I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> I just mean overall, it's a... I used to be smart back before all the information came out. <laughs> before, before we knew everything. Before... <laughs> I used to be the guy in bars, I was smart, and I would say something, and you couldn't argue with me. You either agreed with me or you fucking left. <laughs> Now you got your phone with the entirety of the internet on it. That's not correct. I didn't have to deal with that. There was no dude wheeling his wagon full of books. <laughs> Into the stupid bar. Now all the information is out there. I've never felt dumber. I learned this the other day. I didn't know this. Maybe you did. This is new information to me. Do you know conventional wisdom? How on average, how many spiders the normal person eats in their sleep. And, and uh, who just said, in a year, who said, who just said, well, I heard, uh, what, seven, what, how many? 
eight over there. Anybody? Uh, eight. That's a bunch of eights. Okay. Uh, you guys, congratulations. That is conventional wisdom. Good for you. Um, <laughs> the correct answer is zero. Uh, <laughs> Just so we're clear, nobody's sleep eating spiders over here. I, <laughs> I did a little bit of research, and uh, here's, what I, here's what I can tell you so you can rest easy, literally. Spiders don't like a couple of things. Some of those things are dark, wet, vibrating holes. I don't know if you've seen you sleep eight, but look at the person you love right now. You've seen them sleep, look right at her. Look at <laughs> how many of you just <laughs> making those CPAP in your way through the night like you killed Anakin's mother. <laughs> you don't tell me there's spiders falling in that noisy quicksand. <laughs> look at her. There's no way you're killing that many spiders in your sleep. And if you're catching eight, how many are making it? <laughs> That's the eight you're oh, sucking in in your sleep. How many must be crossing your face every night, just running willy-nilly left to right? All of just red rovering it from one side of your face to the other. Just red light, green light, squid gaming it across you. <laughs> Just frogging it from. <laughs> nope. And that's maybe one suicidal spider. Maybe one who's just like tired. He's been thinking about it every night. He comes and dangles his legs on the side of your mouth. <laughs> like it's a Japanese forest. Just. <laughs> maybe one spider who spent all his money on Jordans or something. It's like four pair. That's a lot of <laughs> shoes. And that's just the ones we kill with our mouths. Eight spiders times eight billion people. That's 64 billion spiders. We're genociding just with our faces. Just <gasps> That's not the ones we kill regular style that you hit with a shoe or you shoot with Lysol because you didn't have real spray. <laughs> We're so stupid. <laughs> Our heads are full of stuff like this that we all believe, and we don't even know why. We just heard it somewhere, right? We heard it from an ant or somebody that sticks in our head. We call it fact. Our ancestors did their own research, and I believe that wholeheartedly. They, they had to. There was no other information. If you were a hunter-gatherer on the plane, and you went out with your friend Uglug. <laughs> it's an old name. You're out in the plains, he goes off to fish, your, your job is gathering, you find a mushroom. I don't know what this mushroom does. I can't look it up, there's no Google Lens, there's no field guide to mushrooms. There's only one way to find out what this mushroom does. Come here, Uglug, eat this mushroom. <laughs> and then in four hours, we'll have some data. <laughs> He'll either come back dead or he will have seen God. And either way, <laughs> write it down. He's like, I can smell every digit of pie. <laughs> we are going to need to invent a teapot. This... <laughs> I'm not designed for this environment. I probably belong better with our ancestors in a less noisy world. I think our ancestors optimized for a certain environment. Now, everything's so noisy, and I don't know how to to sort through it. Our ancestors only had to focus on six or seven things. That's all you can really hold in your attention. And those things better be important. Fire, water, shelter, your baby. That better be in the list. Because if it's not, that tiger will run in and eat your baby. <laughs> but how distracted are we now? I wake up in the morning. I got a text message telling me to check my email to remind me about the Zoom show I got to do later. And it doesn't matter if I answer that. They can just get me on DM or IM or PM on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or Slack. I have four email addresses, and every one of them has a different password. And every one of those passwords has to have an imaginary number, a hieroglyphic, or half of a rational number. 
and they all got to be different. Every one of them signs me up for another mailing list, and I try to unsubscribe from the mailing list, but then they send me a message thanking me for unsubscribing, and now I have to unsubscribe from the unsubscribe, <laughs> and I try to click, but every cursor jumps just a little, or the X is too small, or the thing keeps turning, or there's a countdown, and I go, you know what? I can't handle this. It's just 30-second swipes left and right. That's all my monkey brain can process right now. <laughs> And I go, enough of this. I'll just go to the real world where it's safe. But there's, there's car alarms and 7 a.m. weed eaters and leaf blowers and balloons are falling out of the sky and trains are crashing and there's goddamn politicians. And I, nope. So I'll just go back online. But I can't stop scrolling. I'm just a monkey that keeps scrolling and scrolling for three minutes, then 30 minutes, then three hours, then three days, then three weeks, then three months. I don't know how to stop. I've never once left feeling better than when I got on. And I just found out a celebrity died. I didn't even know it was still alive. And now I'm sad. <laughs> How did that happen? And it's just a machine algorithm laser drilling into my skull and it's giving me nothing but stuff I want and absolutely nothing I need. And you know what, Tiger? Just eat the fucking baby, okay? Just, <laughs> you want some sriracha? It's rooster ketchup. <laughs> I don't have any kids. That should be evident. I think I'd be good at it. I'd be a good parent, but it would interrupt my life a lot. I think. <laughs> I'm just like, there's other ways to leave a legacy. I don't know. <laughs> my friends, though, they all tell every friend, you're just missing out, man. You're just missing out. They all say that. But then they all look like they just got attacked by a raccoon a little. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're missing out. You ever play that what if game with your life? What if your life's trajectory had been altered slightly? Like I got no kids now, but I think about the girl I was madly in love with in school growing up. What would have happened if she had known I existed? Um, <laughs> she didn't, I could have stolen her purse, but she's, <laughs> she's never not been pregnant. That's the whole sentence. That was... <laughs> not a single day, not since high school. I know, I got Facebook, you can check these things. <laughs> and every day she's online, either holding up a pregnancy test or it's a pregnancy photo or she's got a sonogram. She shoots babies out like they are t-shirts at a Rockets game. <laughs> she is. <laughs> and then she reloads it like a Civil War cannon. <laughs> Those are cats. <laughs> they all say I'm missing out. Say, if you just raise the kid, Slade, you didn't understand how awesome raising a kid is. It's so amazing, you should do it. I go, is it? Even God. <laughs> didn't raise the baby. You know what I mean? the most arguably perfect baby that has ever walked the planet. And he's like, no, 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 no. You bring that back when it's 33. I'm not about to baby-proof heaven. This is my youngest niece. She's five. And I'm trying to be a good uncle. I try to play these roles. I try to help them. She's, she's a good kid. She's sharp. She's headstrong. She's a... Uh, we're working on it. <laughs> I went to my brother's house the other day, and he just had this exasperated look on his face. And I go, what's up? He goes, you're your niece. <laughs> and I go, what happened? He goes, well, she got in a little incident on the playground. She was kind of bullying some kids, being mean for no reason. The teacher sent her home. I told her she was in trouble, and she goes, I don't care. I go, oh my God. I go, what'd you do? He goes, well, I sent her to her room. She said she didn't care. I told her I was going to take all her toys away. She goes, I don't care. I go, what'd you do? He goes, I don't know. She just runs the house right now. <laughs> I go, all right, man. Well, let me take a crack at it. He goes, okay. He goes, if you think you can. I go, sure. I go, let me, let me take her for ice cream. He goes, whatever, man. So I grab her by her little hand. I go, come here, rock steady. 
call her Rocksteady because she's got a head like a fucking rhino. She's... <laughs> she'll run through a sheetrock wall, this kid. She's like a mastiff. She's... So I go, come here. Let's go get some ice cream. I take her to get ice cream, and we're sitting there, and I go, hey, listen, you... You really can't be mean to people like this. It's, it hurts when, when we do this to other people, and we need to stop. And she goes, I don't care. <laughs> I go, all right, well, if you're mean to people as a grown-up, they will take you straight to jail. How about that? She goes, I'm not afraid of jail. <laughs> I go, come here, you little heifer. And I, <laughs> I bring her out to the car. I shut the doors. I put her in the passenger seat. And I put my phone on the dash. And for the next 15 minutes, me and my five-year-old niece binged watched women's prison fights. <laughs> and then I dropped her back off at my brother's house. <laughs> I thought I'd solved the problem. I get a phone call about a week later. And I go, what's up? He goes, oh, your niece. I go, did I solve the problem? He goes, God, no, she beat up the snitch. I go, what happened? He goes, well, he goes, listen. He goes, the other day we're at this birthday party for some kids, and there's some rent cops at the event center, some security guards. Some of the kids were acting up. One of the guards came over, casually says to the group, hey, you kids wouldn't want me to bring you to jail, would you? He goes, and your niece lost her mind. <laughs> She's screaming at anybody who will listen, oh, no, we don't want to go to jail. No, 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 don't make us pee and poop in front of strangers, and then we'll have to take showers with other girls, and if they don't bring soap and we got to fight for it, you better sharpen the end of your unicorn toothbrush, bitch. <laughs> I got my niece making toilet apple juice, selling black market pizza squares. <laughs> my brother told me, he goes, I fixed it, man. He goes, the other day, he goes, it's just me and her, daddy-daughter day. She wants to watch a movie. She wants me to pick it. I said, okay. He goes, and I picked a childhood favorite, the never-ending story. He goes, and I had to explain it to her beforehand. I said, honey, this isn't like the movies you watch with all the CGI. This is from my era when the effects had to be real. So everything you see on screen. <laughs> really happened. <laughs> if you don't know the movie. It's cool. You should watch it. There's a big flying dog. There's a rock eating rock. There's a turtle with allergies. But <laughs> there's this scene where Atreyu, our hero, has to lead his best friend, his horse, Artax, across the swamps of sadness. And if you don't know what the swamps of sadness are, they're a swamp where if you get sad, you drown. And that's how the 80s taught us about depression. That's <laughs> not a lot of metaphor back then, really. Just don't do it or you'll die. <laughs> it's pretty much the whole lesson. So my brother said, he goes, I waited till that scene started, right when they got to the swamps of sadness. He goes, and I just left. <laughs> he goes, and I came back in when I heard her start crying. <laughs> he goes, and she's just bawling her eyes out. What was you, baby? What was <laughs> and he goes, this is what it feels like when you're mean to people. Stop that shit. <laughs> hey. He goes, or next Saturday we're watching Old Yeller. This is. <laughs> I like my life. It's, I spent a significant amount of it single. My life is pretty unorthodox. It doesn't 
lend itself to stable relationships, um, usually. My friends all try to set me up. Well, man, you just need somebody with a similar lifestyle, and then it'll work. I go, I'm gone a lot. I travel a lot. My life is public. Who is that? And they go, date an influencer. <laughs> okay, listen. I dated one of these miserable, listen. <laughs> It looks so good on paper. So good, they're beautiful, they're tattooed, they do yoga everywhere. Their life is an Instagram account, it's wonderful. But there's nothing in there. <laughs> and I think, I'll tell you, let me tell you how this ended and then I'll tell you what happened. Um, she left me unexpectedly and I think she's in Chile now, I think. Um, but. When that happens, I think it's important to find a way to get over it. You need to process some mechanism. You can borrow mine. What I like to do is think long and hard about that person and come up with a list of things about them that I do not like. And then that eventually becomes hate, and hate leads to anger. Anger leads to the dark side. And I think that's how you get a red lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> there, were, there were some things I didn't like about her. They were tough, non-negotiables. One. Super superficial, like overly superficial, in the gym every day, all the time, all the time, all the time. I'm not in bad shape, but you can't, I'm not joining your workout cult. Not, I'm not doing that. It, it was CrossFit every day, and I don't trust those people even a little. <laughs> I do not. How do you have that many ropes and tires in a building? No one's built a swing? Why are you so not fun? <laughs> Why? She tried to recruit me with a podcast. Some bro yelling at me, trying to make me feel like a piece of shit to better my life. And it just is terrible. It's just this dude, hey, you ready to get in the best shape of your life, you little piece of shit? You ready? Don't be a little bitch. I got you. This is the hardest 75 days you've ever done in your life. First of all, all you got to do, it's real simple. All you got to do, not eat for 75 straight days. That's step one. <laughs> 75 straight days, no food. Now, on day 30, you're allowed to lick a cracker, but you got to put it... <laughs> right back in the box. Do you understand me? You're going to lick that cracker. You're going to put it in the box. You're going to not eat for 75 days. Then you're going to drink a gallon of water each and every day. That's what you're going to do. Just a full gallon of water each and every day. This is how we're going to get your core in shape, you little bitch. Do you understand? It's going to get your core in shape. You're going to not eat for 75 straight days. You're going to lick that cracker. You're going to drink that gallon of water. You're going to be in the best shape of your life. Do you understand? Don't say you can't do it, you little bitch. I've had people with no arms and no legs complete this program. So if you're telling me you can't do it, you're a straight up little bitch, bitch. I have so many questions. <laughs> First of all, m multiple people with no arms and no legs? <laughs> I don't even know multiple people and you suckered more than one of them into this cult? How did you do that too? Th they drank the water? How? <laughs> How? He's barely a gallon if you count the head. He's not even a whole. Yeah, what do you do it through a gerbil bottle? Like a squirrel that fell out of a tree? How? Plus, he's all core. All core. He doesn't have to mess with leg day or arm day or any day, really. It's just all neck day, every day. <laughs> Two. She had this dog. And I'm okay if you got a dog. I like dogs. Dogs are cool. But don't use your dog against me. Don't use your dog as a litmus test as to whether or not we're supposed to be together. My dog doesn't like you. Fuck your dog. <laughs> right in his dumb little dog face, okay? For starters, it's barely a dog. Barely. It's one of those half face bred down to just hair and suffering. <laughs> Snuffling like a truffle pig. Have you seen this little sad dog a pillar dragging his poor body? One day he will make a cocoon and become a butterfly tattoo. <laughs> your final form. My dog doesn't like you. Fuck him. We won. 
they used to be monsters that ate us around campfires and you got him in yoga pants. That is... <laughs> he doesn't like you. He barks when he's around you. I speak dog. He is asking me to kill him. I know that <laughs> for sure. Have you tried chocolate, little buddy? Have you? <laughs> I would pinch your nose if I could find it. <laughs> Everything was for the Instagram. Everything was for the Instagram with her. Everything. I didn't realize that. We went to Mexico on a little vacation. It was lovely. I thought it was going to be great. Every time we passed a body of water, she had to do yoga. <laughs> and no one tells you that someone has to take those pictures. <laughs> and it's you. And, and they're not good at yoga. The final picture is, but it's after watching this miserable hoe almost drown for 30 straight minutes. <laughs> Just flopping around in the ocean. <laughs> Am I beautiful? Am I beautiful? <laughs> She'd come up just blowing that Pacific neti pot out of her face. <laughs> Just wiping hair in old water like old Greg. She <laughs> looks like a dolphin that didn't gonna make it. <laughs> Am I beautiful? I don't know, it was on video. Do it again, do it again, do it again. <laughs> it was so miserable. By day two, I had a callus on my thumb. <laughs> By day three, every body of water we passed, she had to do it. We're walking down this stretch, and it's a pretty aggressive stretch of beach. There's a rip current that comes in. There's signs everywhere letting you know that people can get sucked out, and in fact do, to the tune of three to five a year. And as we're walking past this stretch of beach, she's trapped in her little narcissistic bubble. She doesn't see any of the signs. She's like, oh my God, I want to do yoga. She went to hand me the phone. I was like, babe, this is a terrible. <laughs> Sunset to waste. You're going to want to back up. <laughs> back up a little bit, man. She tried to hand me the dog. I was like, no, no, no. He wants to go. I promise. I Like I said, she left me unexpectedly. <laughs> and if I know how the tides work, I think she's in Chile now. I We need different ways to see in the world. I only got my own dumb little way, and it's not right. It's, it's barely right. I see the world. I'm an introvert. That's, I see the world through the eyes of an introvert, through the eyes of a comedian. Those are my filters. I, it doesn't sound like this is the kind of place for an introvert to be doing stand-up, but this is also kind of the most alone I know how to be. This is the only place I can turn everything off. I can roll up the limo glass. There's no noise allowed. I can't do that in the real world. I can't make that weed eater stop. I can't make that screaming kid stop or the sirens or the car alarms or the speakers or the no. I can't make any of that stop. But up here, I can do it. And it's always a person in the front row. That's usually where hecklers come from. This first couple is not together. And I know they're not together because they've spent most of the night drunkenly screaming out, We're not Everyone in the room hates them. By the time I get on stage, the dude has been asked to leave. He got a little drunk. He threw up on his shoe a little. <laughs> Not a lot, but, but a little. Just a, just a, bloop. <laughs> just a little, just a, bloop. Just, ju just enough to scare an Uber driver. You know what I mean? <laughs> just a, bloop. my friend! If you do it again, you are not my friend, okay? <laughs> so by the time I get up there, the dude is gone. The woman is still in the room, and I 
go into a setup somewhere in there. I go, so I'm single. And out of nowhere, she goes, no shit. <laughs> she yells this out. And I believe in warning shots. Hey, lady, you're single too, remember? I'm going to continue. She can't let it go. She goes, it's different. I'm a widow. She yelled this out in a comedy club. <laughs> I'm a widow. I didn't miss a beat. I go, so suicide? <laughs> She was like, no, heart attack. I was like, no, that was a suggestion. All right. <laughs> I know that's my third suicide joke in my show. You're like, is he OK? I'm OK. <laughs> but death is a horseman of the apocalypse. And we, I skipped it. Because um, we don't like to talk about it. It's heavy, right? Nobody likes to. But I think we, we should be more open to it. It's the only commonality we all have. It's the only thing we share. I don't care what you think or what you think you know. The only thing we don't know is what's on the bookends, right? What's on either side of whatever we're experiencing right now. And that should be beautiful to us. It should make us love each other more. It should make us focus on the time we have together. But we don't know. And it scares us. In the words of probably my favorite philosopher ever, Cotton Ichabod Joseph. Where, where do we come from? <laughs> where, where do we go? <laughs> There's just so many choices. There's so many places it could be. Nirvana, Valhalla, Allah. I hope it's not reincarnation. I hope that's not what it is. What if I come back as me? What <laughs> I hope it's not ghosts. I don't want to be a ghost. I don't want to dress up like a Victorian fisherman or whatever. <laughs> Have they not updated the wardrobe ever for ghosts? Why is everyone dressed like they live in the 1800s? Has nobody died since Crocs came out? How? You got to walk up and down stairs every night. You should get some comfortable footwear. <laughs> I hope I haunt an escalator. That's what I hope. <laughs> so many options. All dogs go to heaven. All dogs. Even that sniveling little bastard from Mexico. <laughs> even him. <laughs> I don't want to see him again. What if you were married more than once? Multiple wives. What happens when you get up there? Which one do you get? You gonna let me get them both, Lord? You gonna let me? <laughs> Maybe neither. I don't know what your heaven is, but <laughs> my friend thinks we go to regular heaven. I said, "What's that?" He goes, "You know, old men, streets of gold." Oh, okay, that's fair. Streets of gold, though, that's a soft metal. <laughs> I live in a big city. I know what potholes do to your car. I know I only got one spare tire. What happens when I got four flats? Who am I gonna call? Not a tow truck driver. They're for sure in hell. For sure. <laughs> for sure. For sure, for sure. I hope whatever it is is easy. And I hope it's quiet. I hope they take your cell phones at the door, <laughs> right at the pearly gate. Just put them in a bag like you're at a Dave Chappelle show. <laughs> I hope the internet is out, and I hope they paid for the afterlife with no ads. That's what I hope. <laughs> and I hope whatever you got to do to get in, I hope it's easy. I hope all you have to do is solve a CAPTCHA. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Just identify all the crosswalks, and you're in. <laughs> and there would still be people fighting about that. That's not a crosswalk. I know what a crosswalk is. No, that's a, my grandfather was a crosswalk. I identify as a crosswalk. <laughs> and those of us who know the real secret will get in. Anything's a crosswalk. If you're brave enough, open the door. <laughs> <laughs> we confront it every day, man. People, we, we run from it. My, my favorite story involves a couple that is running from the end. Um, they're seated in the front row of a show I was doing in San Antonio, Texas. And I got to describe this couple for the sake of the story. Have you ever met people who can't be the age they are? 
No one wants to get older, right? 20 doesn't want to turn 30. 40 doesn't want to turn 50. 60 doesn't want to turn 70. 70 doesn't want to die like those people in the notebook. Like no one. <laughs> so this couple, front row, man, woman. The, they're, they're young. They're 59, maybe going into 60. They got their lives ahead of them, but they can't own it. The dude is wearing the ugliest shirt I have ever seen with my face. Bright blue paisley, white cuffs, jalapenos embroidered on the inside. It, yeah, it's ugly by Texas standards. This is a, yeah. It looks like every Garth Brooks album at the same time. All the fences. And <laughs> he's in there with this woman who has had all the plastic surgeries done you could possibly have done. And I don't want to talk you out of plastic surgery, right? Maybe something's wrong. You want to fix it. It helps your self-esteem. But people, when you're making it with those concrete duck lips and getting every part of your body refitted, I understand. Some people got some bad boobs. I feel you. I do. They're not all created equal. I don't even mean all sets. I mean some lefts and rights don't match. Can we? <laughs> you ever been around somebody when they're like, do you want to see the twins? And you're like, damn, are they fraternal? Those? <laughs> those don't look anything alike. Those, those look like Forrest Whitaker's eyes. <laughs> Like the one on the left was directed by Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez <laughs> got the one on the right. <laughs> so this man and the woman, this woman has had all the plastic surgeries, everything. If it could be nipped, tucked, tied back, stitched up, Botox, she has paid for it. Here's the problem with plastic surgery. They have never figured out how to fix the neck. It's the holy grail. They can't, you can landscape around the dead body. <laughs> but your neck still looks like a pumpkin stem. Uh, <laughs> is that wicker furniture? That looks, this, they have been talking the whole show. And by the time I get on stage, they're still talking. And I, again, I believe in warning shots, right? I go, hey, I didn't think you two could be louder than his shirt, but you did it. And normal people would have gone, oh my God, I didn't realize her being so loud. Not these two. They get louder. I gotta stop the whole show. I go, hey, I go, if you guys are gonna talk the whole time, there's 400 people in this room. We all wanna know what's so important. And the woman looks up at me. She goes, Cause that's the sound her neck makes. <laughs> like, a, like a shower curtain made of lunch meat. Just. She goes, I was just telling him that shirt you made fun of cost 10 times more than those ugly shoes you're wearing. And I don't care about my shoes, but have, have you ever said something that came out of your mouth so fast? You wouldn't even realize you said it. Where, where halfway through, you're just a spectator to your own shit. <laughs> she goes, 10 times more than those shoes you're wearing. I go, yeah, half as much as that Picasso painting you call a face. <laughs> <laughs> it happens so fast, even I was like, oh shit, did you just hear what that dude said to you? <laughs> She is losing her mind. She's screaming at the guy she came with. <laughs> We've been together for 30 years, me and you. 
30 years. You get up and defend me right now. I'm like, lady, you're going to get his ass beat. <laughs> it's not even going to be me. I go, watch, by applause, how many people is these two? Well, shut up. And 400 people go, hurrah. <laughs> and I go, that is, is what hate sounds like. <laughs> so stop. And she goes, no. 30 years we've been together, 30 years. You do something right now. I'm like, seriously, he's going to stand up and 400 people are going to pile on top of him like Agent Smith in that Matrix movie. <laughs> So, so, so just stop. And she goes, no. Nah. And y'all, there comes a point where you have to acknowledge the fact that you can't shut another person up. There's nothing I can say that's going to make this stop. I got to let her run out of stuff to say all on her own. I let her trail off like the end of a Leonard Skinner song. <laughs> Takes about seven and a half minutes. And eventually the room gets quiet. And this, I look down at her. This is one of the most horrible things. I, sh I sh shouldn't giggle. Uh, <laughs> I look down, I just go, I let the room get dead silent. And I go, look, ma'am, I'm sure you were pretty when you were young. <laughs> I know, this is such a good sentence. That's, <laughs> that is ugly and old before the comma. This is. <laughs> I go, so don't take this the wrong way. But ma'am, you look exactly like Willem Dafoe. <laughs> and I mean Boondock Saints Willem Dafoe, too. Like, there was a firefight! <laughs> like, if she paints her face green, three Spider-Men are coming through the ceiling. Do you understand? <laughs> I go, so the best thing you can do is just get up and leave. And she stands up. She gets this horribly pained look on her face. Well, as much pain as you can generate with no nerve endings. But <laughs> she stands up. She storms out of the room. And it just leaves me and this dude having this stare off. And he's looking up at me like, you, you know I got to do something. <laughs> and I'm looking back like, how about you just don't do nothing? And he slowly starts to rise up out of his chair, and I grab the mic stand, because I'm not getting Chris rocked at my own damn show. <laughs> Dude gets all the way to his feet. He looks both ways, makes sure she's gone. He sets a 20 on the stage. He goes, bruh, I've been wanting to say that shit for about 30 years. <laughs> Houston, I love you.
鸟我敬你。